Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we're going to start on the pages. I'm going to put, well, we've already started on the pages of the current album that we're working on, but I'm going to start on the front. We're going to do an interactive uh, element on the front of the first page here in the album that we're currently making. So we are working on the Simply Magical landscape version. These are printable templates that are available in my Etsy shop. All that's linked down below. And this is the paper collection that I chose to use with this album. And this is 49 and Market, a Curator's Botanical. And uh, two things. I have a playlist for this project. I will link it up here. Uh, it starts with the introduction to the templates and works uh, step by step on through there. And two, I have a very... Uh, I have a list, a specific list for this project to in Amazon if you need to check. So everything I use, uh, hopefully can link it in that Amazon list. It'll be linked down below. The only thing about the Amazon list that I think uh, confuses a lot of people is that there's not like the, I have like, there might be 50 items in each list or something, but it doesn't tell you, it's just a picture. It doesn't tell you what it is, which is very annoying. So it can be kind of confusing when you're going through there and you see just um, a piece of white paper or a piece of gray something or another, a square gray thing on a white background. You don't know what it is. <laughs> That's very confusing and I don't like that. So a good example of one of those things in the Amazon list is these plastic um, sleeves that hold the 12 by 12 paper. All you see is a plastic sleeve. And it, it, you, it doesn't say what it is. So you just gotta look through the list and you just gotta click on the picture and it'll give you a description. Now, if you see something like a tent, that is not supposed to be there. <laughs> a lot of times, uh, sellers, Amazon sellers can reuse a listing, which doesn't make sense. So they can use that same listing and then make it a totally different object. So if, if I had list this paper collection, for example, I, don't, I haven't even looked on Amazon yet. I haven't, none of the videos have been public <laughs> at the moment. So if I listed this paper collection and uh, it was on there and then all of a sudden now there's a lawnmower. I mean, you know, it, it, obviously that doesn't make sense. So uh, let me know if you see stuff like that. That way I can go erase it or delete it or fix it or whatever. So just, you know, shoot me a message through Etsy or through um, Facebook or through YouTube or you know leave me a comment and see if you, if you find things like that let me know anyway sorry about the rambling this is the paper collection we're using and so far we've uh, made the covers we did the binding and we added all of these uh, photo map pages onto each fin so that we um, have like a center, so we can have more interactive elements for each fin. So, I'm gonna set this aside for now. And I've already printed out everything, I think, and I've already cut everything out. And it's really just to save time, because I'm trying to shorten my videos a little bit, um, or at least shorten, shorten the amount that I record so that it's easier to edit. <laughs> I'm just trying to save time, that's all. Okay, so out of the um, set of templates, so this is the landscape version of templates, I printed two of page L9. So this is, the mats are on, this is my workbook, and so the mats are on top of the pages here. So uh, I get asked that quite a bit because they don't understand the page number on this piece of paper here doesn't match the page number that I'm saying. That's because L27 is the mat for page L9 that I'm talking about right now. So, so any who's. All right, so, oh, I did make this, I did make this on camera, this workbook. I guess I should put that in the playlist. I need to remember to do that. Um, <clears throat> so I printed two of these pages off onto 80 pound cardstock. So I printed one with the butterfly background design. And I printed one with, uh, that's just plain. So the reason I did that is I wanted the butterfly background design for part of it, and then I didn't for the other part. So the one with the butterfly background design, I cut all three tabs off, or all three. I cut three tabs off and left one long tab. 
I scored it, I put tape on it, and I inked the back side. And then uh, I just cut this away and I will put this um, away so that we can use it on a different page. And then for the white background, or for just the plain, I'm sorry, the white background, I cut this part away. We're not gonna be using this in this video. And um, we're gonna be using these two. So I cut these apart, I scored, I put tape on the tabs and um, I mitered the corners. I mitered the corners so that they don't overlap. I'm sorry, that was my talk shaking. So I did that to both of these. And then uh, one more thing, I printed off page uh, L21. So this is the, uh, in, this is an insert page. So this insert will pretty much go into any pocket except for the little small ones. Um, and I printed this uh, with the butterfly background design on it. So I just need one. So we're just gonna use one. So I cut it out and I inked it up all the way around and then we'll put this one aside. I do, I do uh, put page numbers on the back of the things that are cut off like this so that I can you know, reference it quickly. Just in case you were wondering why I do that. My brain sometimes is just too full of information and I can't remember everything. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take these two here. Actually, let me get my scoreboard out because... Oh, I'll try to put timestamps below just in case you need to jump around. Like, um, I might put when we start matting because we're going to do some decorative matting um, in this video. So I might do that, do the timestamps like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these... And I'm going to butt the two shorter edges right up next to each other, like this. And I'm going to push them up and have them just as flat and even as I possibly can get them. Then I'm going to take some purple tape, which I have a pile of it right here. Maybe I can get it to let go. And I'm just going to hold them together. At least I'm going to try to. No, say it's shifted. Okay, let's try it like this. Oh, did I get it to shift again? What am I doing? I guess I'm doing something weird when I go to put the tape down. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> okay. So now I'm going to check to make sure that it's going to fit on top of here. And it does. It fits perfectly. So I'm going to remove the tape backing off of the two longer tabs. I did use 3 8 inch uh, tape. This is score tape. I have, I have other brands. I just, for whatever reason, they're not sitting right here. I um, had, you know, I, I use a lot of tape, <laughs> so I run out of tape a lot, and I just grab whatever I see first, especially when I'm creating prototypes and stuff. So I'm going to be super careful, and I'm going to line this up without going over that score mark. like that okay so then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna add a piece of scotch tape so that the inserts won't get stuck on that tab now you could do it another way where you could have the overlapping tabs and uh, that would be just fine but then you'll have a little bit extra bulk so it just really depends on what you want to do Okay, so now I'm going to take this apart, I think, so I can just do one at a time here. I just wanted to get it on there straight for that initial lay down. Okay, so I'm going to take it and attach it down like that. And same for this side. like that and burnish okay 
So now we got two little pockets here. I'm gonna flip this tab over. This one, since my printer sometimes prints kind of funny, this should have been like a half an inch tab, but it's only it's only like I don't know three eighths, a little under three eighths of an inch. So I had to use a quarter of an inch tape here. All right, so let's attach it into the book. So it's gonna go on this first page right here, like that. Yep, and this is gonna flip down. So this is actually gonna be the insert that's gonna be on this little flip down. Okay, it's actually gonna be this way. I've tried to plan this out pretty good. Plus my son, he, um, he'll be home soon and he took one of his last finals for the summer. It might be the last final um, for the summer. So he, um, he's gonna be home earlier than normal. So I'm trying to get this done before he gets home. Okay, so it looks like yeah, this page is a little longer than the base page, but that's okay. I'm going to leave it. It does not matter. It's not going to hurt anything at all. And it's, it's probably because of the scoring right here. Um, I don't, sometimes I forget to take any compensation of this, of this little score mark right here. All right, so we got that. So we are also going to do some magnets so that this will stay put to this page so it doesn't flop around too much. So let me grab those. Here we go. Oops, I need to grab some more out of my stash. So uh, link down below, I have a, 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 a um, resource list of different magnets that I have if you wanna check that out. Um, and magnet savers. Magnet savers are just a little disc that you can use to, like if you're making little envelopes or something where you don't really need a whole lot of extra strength. But this time we're gonna use two magnets because we're gonna need some extra strength because it's gonna go through a few layers. And this paper, 49 a market paper, is super thick. So I wanna make sure that it holds. Matter of fact, well, no, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with it. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go ahead and just attach them and go from there. So where's my little glue dot thingy, my bob? Here it is. This is glue dots adhesive. It's permanent and it's like, it says patent pending, but it's like, it's the same size as these magnets that I have. So I like to use it. I'm just gonna guess the middle here. And for right now, it doesn't matter which way anything goes because there's no other magnet. So I got that. Let me move my purple tape. I'm gonna grab a posty note real quick. Put that down. We're gonna put another one over top, like that. This is some strong adhesive, you guys. I am not kidding. Okay. And then we're going to lay it down and attach it to this back panel. All right. So now we got that down. I am going to put a little piece of tape so it doesn't move. This is one eighth inch tape. I'm just going to put a piece of tape like that and then I'm also going to put a piece of tape on this one. It shouldn't move because that adhesive is crazy strong. But you never know. Okay. And then this is going to go in between here. So I probably don't need the, the um, what's it called back here? <laughs> I probably don't need this on here right now, but I'm going to leave it for now. Okay. All right, let's start with um, the mats for this part here. This is, the mat for this part is on page L27. So I've already traced it out onto some pattern paper, and I'll show you that in just a second. And then this part here uh, is the mat for the main base page, which is L25. Okay, so let me show you what I did. 
just if you wanted to recreate, you could. So here is, this is the right paper, isn't it? I think so. Yes. So these are the mats that are going to be right here and right here. Okay, so I kind of wanted it to be a continuous thing. So what I did was I traced the main base page out of this top corner, and then I traced this flip down page right below it, and then these are the two leftover pieces. So I'm gonna put this, and the tall piece, I'm gonna put it in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that one in there. It's a big chunk, just so I don't misplace them. So they're gonna go like this. So one's gonna go here, one's gonna go here. But I was thinking about maybe making a bit of it like a tuck right here. Even if we didn't tuck anything in there, it might be kind of, um, I don't know. I feel like maybe there needs to be a tuck here. Does anybody have that thought? I think there should be, like a fussy cut, just like, I don't know. I haven't decided if I want to do that yet. So I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go ahead and attach this one down because why not? And you could use tape or you could use matter of fact, you could use I'm gonna use Fiber Tight because it's one of my faves. You could use art glitter glue with this particular cardstock because it is so 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 thick. Um so if you wanted to, you could use our glitter glue, but I'm gonna use my fiber tuck. And I'm just gonna go around this part right here, just a little, and I'm gonna go around my edges. And it's really not that much glue. I know it looks like I'm putting a lot of glue down, but it's not. It's, um, it kind of pulls and stretches it when you swirl it around like that. Okay, so. Trying to wiggle it into the right place here. So I did just trace these. You could have printed if you wanted. You could have printed these uh, these out, but I didn't. I just traced them. And I also inked everything out. I don't know if I said that already. I just, I'm not sure. I think it might be kind of cool to have like, to tuck something underneath there. I just don't know what. All right, let me let me see here. Let me see. What if I did a pencil line where I could kind of follow that pencil line a little? I don't know if it would look right or not. I guess we could try it. Worst thing that could happen is it doesn't look good and we just glue it completely down. So I'm gonna grab a craft mat here and I'm gonna grab a craft knife and I'm just going to gently Pressing too hard. I do feel like I'm pressing pretty hard. Oops. 
That one got a little further than I wanted, but that's okay. 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 Let me erase the pencil line. I would put in there. I don't have a plan. It was just an idea, an, an idea I had. <laughs> Let's see. A three by four photo mat, would that fit in there? That could fit in there. That's interesting. Maybe something like that. Hmm. I have to think about that because that kind of looks kind of cool. I kind of dig it. This is just from my Photomats Essentials, the original Photomats Essentials. Um, I just have it sitting over here on my desk for like, um, so when I go to plan out what something looks like, um, I could use it. That's kind of cool. Okay, now I wonder do I ink that edge up or do I leave it be? Uh, I'm going to ink it up a little. I'm coming in from behind just so it doesn't make too big of a mess. Also, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to burnish it just a little bit so that it's flat and doesn't have a raised edge anywhere. Okay, okay, now I'm going to take a piece of tape and go over top of here. Just a piece. Ooh, I'm sorry, I bumped you guys. Did I move you? Just a piece of tape to um, cover that. So if, if 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 there is an insert, it's not going to get caught on anything. Just like that. I got a piece of eraser dust caught in there. <laughs> That's okay. All right. So now I'm going to go around the edges. I'll be very careful on this edge here. I just want to get the very, 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 very edge. Then I'm going to go around this edge. That's it, just like that. And I'm going to place that on here. This is one of my most favorite images out of this paper collection. I just think it's so cute. So again, we can have this in here like that if we want. So I'm going to leave it there for just a moment. Oh, and this is going to go here. I'm going to put the butterfly to the back there. And I, I'm going to mat that. But I think for now, right now, I'm going to go ahead and do these two right here. And those are the mats for that are on page L27. So I took those mats and I traced it onto this cardstock or this pattern paper. And it looks like this. Right, so I cut, traced and cut those out, and this is what the other side of that looks like. You could have used either side. I just kind of wanted something neutral. So I'm going to sit back in my crafty companion there. And this back up. 
And my folder. I try to stay as nice and neat as I can. It doesn't always work out the whole time, but I try. So, so these are going to go here like this. And I've already picked out a couple embellishments that I think might be kind of cool here. So I was kind of wanting to do this. This is from the back of the paper pad or the paper collection, the the um, title sheet or the, um, what's that called? I called it something the other day. I don't know. And then this was from the, yeah, this one is from the die cut pack that we are using. So I thought I would do something like this. But I think, I think it might be kind of fun to use real brads on this one. So let's see. So I'm going to take, I've just got a couple, this is a couple layers of quarter of an inch fun foam that I glued together. And if you took a class of mine at Medicon, you, um, you have like a little square. I wonder if, you, if anybody kept them. I'm just going to, no, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use the skinnier one. That one's a little bit fatter, the other one. So I'm going to take my little pokey tool and I'm going to just poke whoop, right where those faux ones are. And I'm going to grab, I don't know, I think I'm going to go with this, this one. And I might just... I don't know. What should I do? I might just have it stuck through there and then cut the back off. <laughs> and these are just little mini brads. You, I'll link them in my Amazon, but Tam, uh, Tam, Tam Holtz, Tim Holtz has some. Um, and then those I think were either Hobby Lobby or Amazon. I don't remember. I don't remember which. Uh, so I'm going to take and I'm going to push down one side, the side that's going to go on the inside. Oh, you know what? No, I know what I'm going to do. Okay, take them back out. I know what I'm going to do. I am going to lay this where I want it and we're going to go through the mat. Like that. That's what I'm doing. those two together. Let's stick this back in here. Okay. Yeah. So that just gives just a little bit of dimension to an otherwise flat surface. There we go. So I'm gonna put that one there, and then to ink this up either. So again, this was cut from the paper pad or paper collection title sheet. just stick it on here kind of like this but I feel like something needs a little bit of something 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 wait I'm gonna think on that I'm thinking we're gonna do some gold distress foiling stuff but I do have a mat for this so the mat for this insert is on page L39. So I took this uh, mat and I traced it out onto something I printed. So let me show you what I printed. So this is one of the colors from my shades of color. And that one would be, this is the shades of color two that I'm using. And I'm pretty sure this is color number 10. But as usual, I always tell you guys to print your own 
print your own index sheets out so you know what color goes best with what you're doing. But this, this one is number 10. That's the one I printed. And then on top of that, I printed the floral autograph companion paper collection. I printed one of the pages. Oh, I'm trying to <laughs> take that out and it wasn't coming. I printed, oops, oh, come on. This page right here. So when it's, when it's full, let me scoot you in. It's hard to see. At least I can't see it with the glare. This is just an index sheet where I printed nine to a page. But um, I printed this one here that's got some almost like almost purpley blue, purpley blue writing on it. So I printed that one off on top. And so this is what I got the end result. So all of these are in my... Uh, Etsy. I have them linked down below. So this is the Floral Autograph Companion Paper Collection, and then this is the Shades of Color too. They're all available on my Etsy shop. So I printed this onto 80 pound white cardstock, and I traced the mat out. So it was right here. I traced the mat out and I inked it up. So we're going to have that as the mat for this insert. I also was thinking while I was experimenting, I did take the shades of colors that I picked out for this project. Oh, I guess I could scoot back just a little bit, jeez. And I printed the shades of color. I did four to a page, but I only picked the three that I, I wanted. So these are the three blue, 10, 11, and 12. And then I printed the butterfly background on top of it. Now I have the full background design. So if you don't have the full background design, it does not come with a set of templates only available in the background design sets that are available in April and October. Um, you can just use one of the bigger pages and print over top of it just to see what it looks like. Just to give you an idea of the different things you can do with the shades of color. So it just adds like just a little bit of interest. And I almost did that one, but this one, uh, got my attention a little bit more because it has the script and I thought it might be just a little bit more exciting, you know, visually exciting. So I did that with all three color combinations that I picked. So the blues, the purples, and the greens because I really wanted to see what it was going to look like. So keep that in mind when you're using your shades of color, you can print, you know, right on top. So like if you wanted to print this this whole page, this mat, this whole mat page that from the a set of templates onto this background color, uh, you could, you with the, you know, if you use the butterfly background design, now you, you can see what it was going to look like. Uh, that's purple. You would see what it would look like if you did that. So that way you would have a good idea if you wanted to, you could just done it that way. Does that make sense? You could have literally just printed the full page of the mats for this, for this insert onto the blue shades of color. And if you use the butterfly background design mat, then you will get that result, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm making sense, but then I also feel like I'm not, so. If you need more clarification, let me know, and I will, I will try to clarify. So I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna go ahead and glue it down, just so we can get a good sense of what this is gonna look like. And I picked the blue because I picked the blue butterfly. And we're going to have a couple inserts for that as well. Okay. So then this, right, this will be here. I'm kind of feeling like we do need a little bit of zhuzhing, but I don't know where. I'm thinking we should do here and here, the top corners. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do these before I attach them down, and I'm going to try to find my gold foil. This is the Six Sizzix Decorative Foil Sheet. It's uh, not heat activated. It's just um, 
just kind of intended for projects like this. <laughs> so I'm going to take and put some glue on the corner there. I'm just using a glue stick. Use whatever. And you can see I've used this. I don't know how well you can see because of the glare. You can see how much I've used of this. It's just it's an easy way to add just a little bit of distressed something something. It's wanting to focus on something else, right? It's just a really cool way of adding something. So how far do I want to go with that? Maybe just do a couple spots. Maybe just do opposite ends. I don't know how many albums I've done this on now. I don't know how many albums, video series. I used to use another foil, um, that the mink foil. I used to do the exact same thing with that one and had the exact same effect. So whatever, I think you should just try it. So if you already have foil, give it a whirl and see if it works. I don't really think it matters the glue stick. That's just what I use. That's what I have. Um, I don't think it really matters on that. But I could be wrong. I'm not. I'm not an expert. So I've got that. And then now I kind of feel like the little butterfly needs a little extra something. 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 We do, I do have that foundry wax that, um, that I had from the last project. Let me scoot you in on this one. Let's see if we should do that. And that one is, this is the foundry wax and this one is statue. Can you see? I don't know why it wants to focus on something other than what I'm telling it to focus on. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to shake it really good. I'm going to move it away from your view so you don't have to watch that happen. And I think all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot here on his, a bigger dot on his body. Put a little dot on his noggin and maybe three dots on his tail. And let's see what that looks like. I might put some on his wings too. So now I'm going to take a heat tool. This is a Wagner heat gun. Actually. Before I do that, let me grab something that I can hold it with. Yeah, I kind of feel like now it's going to need, it needs a little something more. So... I'm just going to go like this, I think. One, two, three. One, two, three. And maybe one at the bottom here. Just because. All right, I'm going to put that up and out of the way. So you have to heat set this uh, or it's not going to stay and you can see the difference between the heat set one come on camera there we go the heat set one that's shiny and the one right next to it that's not shiny Okay, 
Okay, so it's just as simple as that. And that will go there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach these down. And then we'll do the inserts. So I can always come back and add more stuff later on. You have to leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Uh, which one you like better? Do you like the boundary wax or do you like the distressed glue stick foil or do you just love them both equally like I do? <laughs> I do. I love them. I love them both. So I was going to do this little butterfly guy like maybe right here. So I think I'll just do a little dab of glue right here and I'm, try, I'm not sure I might tuck something underneath it I haven't decided Oop. so I'm just trying not to tuck it all the way down for now Okay, for the inserts, I have a couple different options that I've printed. I'm, I'm going to use two, I think. One thing is I wanted to point out that this page here, these little pockets here in the landscape version, they have a set of inserts, and that is on page L16. So you can totally use these inserts as well. So these are, these, oh, whoop, these are stuck down. That's what these are. Do you all think that when it gets really hot and humid in your house, do you find that your tape runner tape like melts or something into stuff more? <laughs> I feel like mine does. Uh, so these are mats for the, uh, or I'm sorry, these are the inserts for this page. This is the mat. I don't have an actual insert, but they're meant to be, you could use them as a single insert or you could use them as a folded booklet, but they're meant for those pockets. They also will hold three by four photos. Um, so you could use that. I also printed off page L20 in the butterfly background design. I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to use this yet, but I also printed this out onto 80 pound white cardstock. Uh, I may, may not. The other things that I've printed, the other thing that I printed off is out of the enhancement pack. This is available separately from the landscape version. There are two sets of tags this one has like the little faux metal corner and then this one has like a decorative faux uh, metal corner as well it just doesn't look like a book corner it's a little bit different so um, we're going to be using the vintage enhancement pack i don't know if i've said that already i may not have said that i may have just decided that uh, recently so the enhancement pack i'm going to be using is the vintage background design all of this is linked down below and i printed this page off page uh, e12 so I thought, I don't know, I can't decide if I want to use this one or this one. Because I want to use a tag. And then I printed one more thing off. And this one is from the um, Photomat Essentials 2. So this is what that Etsy listing looks like. So these are like Polaroids. So they are designed to hold, like this one is designed to hold a 3x4 photo right here in the middle. So I thought I printed this off. All of them are on white cardstock. I printed actually printed this this design and I printed this design, which is page 12. So this is page 9 out of the Photomats Essentials 2, and this is page 12 out of the Photomats Essentials 2. So one's a black vintage background, and then this one is like a scripty vintage vintage background. But if I use one of these, I feel like this would get, one of these would get lost in front of that, if that makes sense. So that's why I went with the black. But either one will work, okay? So if, uh, let's just start there. Let me just start with the black. Move that. So I'm going to take my paper trimmer and I'm just going to cut all the way around all four, all four uh, borders here, all the way around and go from there actually no i'm going to cut the top and bottom off actually 
Okay, oh, I took a little bit extra off the top there. And before I split it in half, I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my scoreboard and I'm gonna score down the middle. Also I wanted to point out if you don't have a separate scoring tool, like I have these EK Success stylus, if you don't have that, you can definitely use your bone folder. Your this is a Teflon bone folder. This one it doesn't have a point. I used to have I used to use a pencil style Teflon, but I would wear down that point so much and it just got on my nerves, so I just quit quit doing that. <laughs> so I scored down the middle and I'm going to fold this in half like that. Furnish. And then I'm going to cut. Oh, I did bump you that time. Oh, I'm so sorry. Alright, so then I'm going to cut. Both of these at the same time, all the way down, like that. Then I'm going to separate them. And it should be a perfect cut. So now we have either a booklet or a double sided photo mat. So again, a 3x4 photo can fit there. And I may have to come back. Uh, at a later date and stamp three by four on these with the Heroes Hero Arts uh, Unicorn White Pigment Ink. This is Pigment Ink. This is the one I am drawn to. I each time I go to grab for white ink, this is the one I grab. And then, of course, my stamp set. This is the picture perfect stamp set that I created with May May and it is for um, stamping photo mats so yeah I'll link that down below I'm not sure if it's in right now I haven't checked I'll have to look I hope it's in because May May uses it a lot too so that's so cute May May I have my, my granddaughter her nickname is May May not spelled the same it's M-A-E M-A-E but it is so cute every time I say my granddaughter's name I, th I think of May May <laughs> Okay, so I'm not going to do anything with those just, just yet. I'm just going to leave them as they are. And I'm not going to ink them or anything. Although that one doesn't look like I, I trimmed it very well. Oh, I know what it is. There's just a, I left a tiny little space between the top and bottom sets of photo mats. And um, I didn't cut it off. Okay. All right, so this one... This is what I'm thinking. I don't know if this is how it's going to end up looking. So one thing about me and my albums is that I move things around. I come back and add things. I come back and remove things. I, I am constantly moving things around. So yeah, this might be what it looks like right now, but it may not be what it looks like in the end. You know, we might come back and add photo mats or we may be adding a pocket here. There's just no telling what we'll add uh, at any given time. So, all right, so we got those two, and then, so now I just need to decide. I think I'm going to go with the vintage, um, only because we used the butterfly background on the back there, but I'm obviously I'm going to keep this and use it for something else, and I'm not going to make these double-sided, so I'm just going to cut them out for right now. So I'm going to cut, I'm actually going to cut all three of these out at the same time, just because it's easier. And then I'll separate them. So this um, set has two different uh, hole reinforcements. So one of them is like a regular hole reinforcement. As you can see there. And then the other one is kind of like the old fashioned with like the metal a grommet type hole reinforcement. But I think I'm going to use these top ones. So I'm going to have to change my battery as well. So if it cuts off, that's why. But I'm just going to cut these out, and I'm going to ink them up. And that's it. Okay, so I got them cut out. And I think I'm going to use, this is the, the hole reinforcements that we made in the, in, the, in the cover video, I think. 
I think that's when we did it. And I did a combination of both of the Faded Jeans and the Villainous Potion on here. And I did, I put the Walnut Stain a little bit on top too as well. But I also think I'm gonna add some gold foil to a couple of them because why not? So I'm gonna get a non-stick pad here. And I'm just gonna, let's just do this bottom row here. And I do have another gold foil sheet where I've done this many, many, many times, you guys. You guys know I love doing this. It's like, there it is right there. It's hard to see because of the glare, but you see all those little holes? <laughs> I love doing this. But the ones I did in the last project, I'm sending off to the to the leftover challenge person that I chose so that she can use those in her album. So anyway, it just adds a little extra something cool to the whole reinforcements, and I like them. So that, this way I have both options. So I'm going to stick these on here right on top of where that one is. I may, you never know, I may come back and mat the back of these. So for now, I'm not gonna put a whole reinforcement on the back side just yet. You can also, if you did if you did the whole reinforcement after we put the pull, you can also cut a slit in this and work your way around the, the pull. So um, yeah, you're never, you know, you're never uh, too late to add the whole reinforcement, that's what I'm trying to say. This is just a regular pair of um, hole punch, hole punchers, hole punch, hole punch, um, is that what it's called? Honestly, look, I didn't even get that one on there very well, but that's okay. So these are gonna go in here like that. Oh, I need to pull the pull, pull the pull. I even thought about, I, I need to add another insert, but I'm not sure what, so, the uh, ephemera pack come with like postcards, but there there's only three. So I have obviously have a set of printable postcards. I may use those. I may print some of those. Not right now. We're we're just gonna have to come back to add the third. Also the um, the embellishment pack had a whole bunch of these kind of things. So maybe we can just add these kind of things in here. Uh, but again, I'm just gonna wait. Also has tickets. In my random embellishment set of printables, there's there's jumbo tickets, and I thought that might be fun to add in here. I don't know. There's all kinds of options, but for right now, I'm just going to leave these two. But I do want the I do want to add a pull, and I think I'm going to use this natural hemp. Is it hemp cord? I don't know if it's hemp cord or not. Um, it's um. Uh oh, did I pick the wrong? Uh-oh. Hang on, I gotta find my end. I saw it in here, at least I thought I did. Nope, that's not it. Where's the end? Is that it? Ah, oh, there it is. That was it. Okay. <laughs> um, it's called On Accord. It doesn't really say what it is, so... Anyway, I think I'm going to use this. I might end up adding more down the road. But for now, we're just going to use these. So I'll just, I just like to do this and then tie a knot like this. Just so that it's a little looser. And not as tight. So do that. Just cut some of that extra off. We started off pretty good. I think it looks really nice. Uh, I'll probably come back off camera and ink the insides of these up. We may end up putting mats on these. We may end up putting photo mats. Like, where's that one? Oh, I've got it on the back there. There's a lot of things that we could come back in here and do. So, I am just going to leave it at that for now. And I do feel like I like my inserts in threes. So, you know, in odd numbers, ones or threes. So, we probably will have to come back and add another insert into these little pockets but look at how cool this turned out 
um, I think it did anyway. So we got our two little fun little separate pockets there and these flip down. And then we've got this sweet little cut out here. And then we've got this loose uh, insert here. I may end up putting a pull. I may end up putting something on the back, putting something here. But again, we're just gonna start somewhere. So this is where we started. All right, you guys, be sure to let me know what you think in the comments. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And be sure that you're subscribed to my channel and hit that bell notification so that you get notified when I upload a video. And thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.